Good morning, happy Easter everyone. Our ushers are passing out a copy of the Easter sequence for our congregation today, so please be on the lookout for that as you enjoy a short prelude. Got a room. Good morning and welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Let us prepare to be blessed. Let us be open to grace and praise God. Our intentions for this Mass are the eternal rest of Joseph Kahn von Dong. And we do have one announcement. The Knights of Columbus will hold an officer's meeting at Sacred Heart High School on Wednesday, April 3rd at 7.30 p.m. We meet during the joyful Easter season, excuse me, Easter time to celebrate the commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He, as the Good Shepherd, gathers us here and invites us to follow him on the journey from death to life. The sheep that is to be born again to life is each of us who, is re who was redeemed with the most precious blood of the Savior on the wood of the cross. Beloved, today let us believe that Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please stand. Our gathering hymn is number 172, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 172. Please join us in singing.
take some time to scoot toward the inside aisle. And same here, if you'll scoot toward the inside aisle, uh, that way people who are coming in can be seated. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. You better say it loud. I was up late last night, and I'm not a night person, you know what I mean? It would be embarrassing to fall asleep in my own mass, but that's okay. Again, it is a happy Easter. It's the day where we celebrate life and resurrection. We celebrate victory over death. We celebrate the love of Jesus that surpasses everything, including our sins. And so we place ourselves in that holy presence, seeking mercy and love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and one day bring us into a life that is everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our glory has been silent for 40 long days. Let's join the angels and saints in singing our Gloria. this day through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Oh, thank you, Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad for. This is the day that the Lord has made. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad for. Yeah. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb Christ has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing the Easter sequence. Every 
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and he saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. So if you were here last night, you could hear the same homily, but that only means that God wants you to hear it twice. So just be aware. Most people know with all of my time here, I love storytelling. But I also found out over the years preaching, it is risky. And it requires on the part of the one telling the story some sort of vulnerability. But that it exists not only for the storyteller, my friends, but also for those who are listening to the story. Are you open to what's being shared? It is said that the traces of our past, our story, shapes the narrative and offers us grace for our future. This whole week, according to how much you've participated, you have been participating in storytelling. And it is God and God's only son telling the story that is not only their story, but our story as well. And I want you to think about that. Because I just told you that storytelling is a risk and requires vulnerability. Think of it. That God risks our acceptance or our rejection when he tells the story. God makes himself vulnerable to us in the church again and again wondering if this time we'll finally listen to the story. Why? Well, the story began with creation, which you would have heard last night in the vigil. All those chapters of Genesis, where God makes something out of nothing. God draws life from death. God creates light from darkness. The story is summed up, though, in a few words. God created and it is good. This ancient story, friends, that we tell over and over again in our lifetimes is filled with surprise and disappointment for our God at every turn. We love God, and then we reject God. We belong to God, and we find ourselves surrounded by idols. We seek mercy, and then what do we do but sin again? We give thanks, but we seem to always want just a little bit more. There's one thing consistent about our story with God. That is, as imperfect and as sinful as we are, as fickle as we are, if I might say, 
We are so loved and still loved by the great storyteller himself. And so advanced centuries from Genesis, there was the Jewish religion. And religion was created to tell the story. It was not just for our good, but also to praise God in the process. But we've lost sight of that truth, the creation that God so loved. God says, prophets, bring my message to them, and what do we do? We kill them. Bring my love, my holy law, to guide them, and the law becomes an idol instead. Bring my grace and share it with everyone. And all of a sudden, we kind of figure out everyone except. We simply don't understand. Words were not enough. And so another story is told. We call it the Christmas story, where God becomes flesh. All of a sudden, that mysterious God of the Old Testament now has a face. And this God has a name, and his name is Jesus, like us in all things but sin. In him, we have all that we need. But it seems in our story sometimes it's just not enough. In him, he gives new life and energy to God's reign amongst us. But again, even this ends tragically, as politics and pressure kills the storyteller, God's only son on a cross. Last night, we tell another story, and today we tell another story, and we name this story Easter, as the very darkness of nature surrenders to the light and rules over the dark. But with the story, church, with the story, we now have a mission. You and I are invited to risk and to be vulnerable and to tell the story, not just to those who believe, but to those who don't believe, to those who would challenge us. To tell the story of just how much, through the centuries, how much we are worth and how much we are valued in God's eyes. That we're called to give voice to the journey thus far. We don't know what it means in the end. We remember hearing, though, what a lack of love triggers. We heard it last Sunday. It's called passion, suffering. We witnessed great love in Jesus as he poured out his life for us on Good Friday. Last night, we had a beautiful litany of the saints. Saints that attest throughout the ages. It's worth telling the story. It's worth being vulnerable. It's worth the risk, church. Centuries of stories attached to names called saints affirm this. And this morning, and this morning, worship here like no other day throughout the church year brings heaven and earth close together in one place, in one people as a surprise, as delight conquers sadness and sin. The great story of Jesus is told, and we are part of that story. We celebrate the Eucharist. On Holy Thursday, we washed feet. We can never do one without the other. You can't receive Jesus up here and not receive Jesus out there. We touch the wood of the cross, some of us with our lips, some of us with our hands, with the Lord, and we claim a promise of life beyond death. The Alleluia buried in the ashes of Lent is resurrected, not just in the church, but supposedly and hopefully in our lives for these next 50 days. Last night, new sisters and new brothers joined us and reminded us of our call and the reason for this Alleluia day. Now let's be clear, Sacred Heart, and our visitors. Our story is not yet perfect. If your story is, you come on up here and I'll sit down. But it is still our story. And God is still involved in our story and Jesus is involved in our story. Let's remember who's in charge of the story. It's God. What's in charge of the story? It's love. And why rejoice? Because we believe with all our hearts today that love himself is risen and that one day we're going to rise with him. 
We begin again, all because God in Christ took a risk, told a story, and became vulnerable to you and me, mere creatures of the incredible Creator. May the joy of Mary and Peter and John and the disciples be our own this day. May our delight be such that we run and tell everyone what God has done in our lives, what Jesus, because of his resurrection, has done and is doing. That he is risen, and so will we. This is our story. In fact, church, listen to this. We are the story. Wow. Happy Easter. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with Christ in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of our holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, Church, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Oh my goodness, wait a minute. I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Oh, I can almost believe that one. Do you renounce the lure of evil and so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, who is the author and prince of sin? You believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. You believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. May God, the Almighty Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us forgiveness of sin. Keep us by his grace in Christ our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Do we miss anyone? Just raise your hand, I'll come back to you. <laughs> United with the risen Lord who wants to give peace to his faithful people and to all those who seek the truth, we present our needs to God in prayer. After a prayerful pause, we will respond in faith, saying, Lord, give us the splendor of your life. Lord, Lord give, give us, us the splendor, splendor of, of your, your life. life. Lord, who conquered death, strengthen your church in the work of proclaiming your resurrection to the whole world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, give us, us the, the splendor, splendor of your of life. Your life. Lord, who made your disciples happy on Easter morning, give strength and perseverance to our Pope and our priest, Father Ken and Father Tomas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, give us, us the splendor, splendor of, your, of life. your life. Lord, who lives and reigns forever, strengthen those in authority in wisdom and prudence. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord give, give us, us the, the splendor, splendor of, of your, your life. life. Lord, who has overcome the yoke of sin, send the grace of conversion to all those who have strayed from you. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord give, give us, us the splendor, splendor of, of your, your life. life. Lord, who left your tomb empty, give the deceased the grace of living in the eternal joy of your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord give, give us, us the splendor, splendor of, life. of your life. Risen Lord, strengthen us with the hope of our future resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, give, give us, us the splendor, splendor of, your, of life. your life. Loving Lord Jesus, giver of life, conqueror of death, hear our prayers and grant that by serving you faithfully upon earth, we may come one day to see your glory in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated. as we now present ourselves in our gifts. Let us sing together number 650-650, baptized in water.
Let's pray that our sacrifice and prayer be acceptable to our faithful God. May the Lord. Exultant with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which we, your church, are wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, we'll come with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praises. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice might be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought here before you for consecration that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread from the table, and he giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice filled with wine and again giving you thanks. He gave the chalice to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for the many for forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and this living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. They make of us an eternal offering to you so that we might obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of our world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church upon the earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Louis, our Bishop, the other bishops, the clergy, deacons, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who summoned here before you this morning. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admits now to your kingdom, especially those whom we now pray, and remember in a special way those who were with us last year and are no longer with us on earth. One day we too hope to enjoy forever that fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon this world all that is good. Through him with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Father of the Risen One is also our Father. And so let's pray with great trust to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not... <clears throat> Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you all. We take some time now and share that peace with those who are around us. Thank you very much. You did good. Would you please pray with me? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. We need one more Eucharistic minister. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Rest, blessed are we called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you enter under my, my roof. Only, only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
As we come to receive the Lord in Holy Communion, let us sing together number 173, 173, the Suscito, He is Risen. Join us in singing number 339-339, The Supper of the Lord. Precious Lord, precious Lord. 
Just once again to take time to wish you a blessed and holy Easter day and a blessed and holy Easter season. One of the things I think that at least I kind of lighted upon as I was reflecting on the homily today is as long as we're in the story, God is not finished with us. So perhaps a good thing to consider these 50 days is what is God doing in your life right now? Where does he want to bring resurrection in your life right now? What does he want to bring new life and light? in your life right now. Just think about that and pray about that. I'm almost sure that after mass, at least we've been getting tons of eggs into the office. So I think there's an Easter egg hunt afterwards. Is it gonna be at the schoolyard or the, does anyone know? Playground, so at the at school playground. So again, kids, uh, you have to be 26 or younger to do this. <laughs> so anyway. Kid, y'all enjoy yourselves. Also at the doors, we have a limited number of copies, but these are activities for a family in the Easter season. This, in Espanol, in English, is actividades para la temporada de Pascua, para las familias. So, si quiere, this is just, it's basically some ideas to keep the Easter season, Easter spirit alive in the family, and some things that the family can do. You'll notice that your really up-to-date priest has put in Google it. 
check out this website. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it saves me some time and saves the church some money. So anyway, so again, those are at, your, at the front doors only, at the front doors only. So if you want them, avail yourself of that. Let's stand and pray, y'all. The other thing we wanted to make sure and thank is the choir. They've been doing an awesome job. Yes. As I say, no one else does it like Sacred Heart. That's why we're the mother church of the Northern Deanery. <laughs> anyway, and also to, for all the army that comes in here all during Holy Week and decorates and makes this beautiful place even more beautiful. So again, they, you don't see them. You hardly know their names, but every single year since I've been here, they've done this. So we thank them as well. Let's pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Have a great day, y'all. Thank you. As we ascend, let us sing together number 177, 177, the day of resurrection. Rejoice with me in trial.